What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. It's been a year since I made a video on advanced adverbs, and I reckon it's high time we learned 10 C1 and C2 adverbs. Are you ready? If so, grab a pen and your vocabulary notebook, and let's get going. And now let's get started. First, we're going to learn six C2 adverbs. And the first one on my list today is at large. It means in general, and it's a synonym of largely. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, new measures have at large been welcomed by the public. The second example last year was at large full of ups and downs. And at large has one more meaning, and it's a dangerous person or animal that is not captured. For example, the fugitive was at large. And now let's move on to our second C2 adverb, which is infinitely. It's used especially in comparisons, meaning very much. The first example, my Spanish is now infinitely better than my Russian. One more example, I reckon working from home is infinitely more convenient than going to the office. And infinitely can also mean extremely with no limit. One simple sentence, children are thought to be infinitely resilient. Number three, insofar as. It's used to talk about the extent or degree to which something happens. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, the pictures are similar insofar as they show people working outdoors. I think insofar as can be especially useful for your speaking exam part two, in which you've got two pictures and you have to talk about their similarities and differences. The second example, a painful experience can be a blessing in disguise insofar as it can make you grow as a person. And one more example here, I'll help you in so far as I can. Number four, theoretically. It means that something could possibly exist, happen, or be true, although it's unlikely. The first example, theoretically, the medicine will ease the pain. Number two, theoretically, we can win the election. And one more example here, it's theoretically possible, but I wouldn't rush into it. Number five, undeniably. It means in a way that is true or certain and can't be denied. The first example, she undeniably deserved to pass the exam. Number two, he's undeniably a talented actor. And one more example here, your English has undeniably improved. Number six, wholeheartedly. It means without any hesitation or doubt, completely or in an enthusiastic way. You do something with your whole heart. The first two examples could be especially useful for your speaking exam. Number one, I agree with you wholeheartedly, which means I totally agree with you. Number two, I believe that wholeheartedly. And one more example here, she devoted herself wholeheartedly to her career. And guys, before we continue and learn four more advanced adverbs, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, please don't forget to like it. And if you find English bits interesting and valuable, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Thank you for your love and support. Number seven, it's a great adverb to use when you are about to finish your speech and you want to sum up. You can say, by and large. It means, in general, on the whole, everything considered, and something is mostly, but not completely true. And let's look at three examples. The first one, by and large, the movie is worth watching. The second example, by and large, I like working for myself. So taking everything into account, advantages and disadvantages, I like being self-employed. And one more example, 
by and large, people are starting traveling. Number eight, let alone. I like this one. It's used after a negative statement to say that the next thing you mention is even more unlikely. And now some examples. I don't want to see him, let alone invite him to my birthday party. The second example, the boss didn't appreciate her work, let alone offer a pay raise. And one more example here, he didn't even call her, let alone visit her at the hospital. And two more to go, the following two adverbs are not marked as C1 or C2 adverbs by the Cambridge Dictionary, but I do think they are advanced. Number nine, a formal adverb, conversely. It means that the situation that you're about to describe is the opposite or reverse of the one you've just described. The first example, when you're young, you have good health and little time. Conversely, when you're retired, you have some health issues and a lot of time on your hands. The second example, I love taking risks. Conversely, he's risk averse. And one more example here, people with a poor education normally have lower paid jobs. Conversely, well-educated people generally earn more. And last but not least, perennially. It means in a way that continues for a long time or happens repeatedly again and again. The first example, Friends, is a perennially popular TV show. The second example, it's perennially our overriding concern. Overriding is a very useful adjective that means more important than anything else in a particular situation. And the last example for today, it's been a perennially difficult situation for Ukraine. Hand in there. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this video up to the very end. I really hope you found it useful and it helped you expand your vocabulary. And if you want to learn more advanced adverbs, make sure you watch the two previous editions. You can find all the links in the description down below. And of course, if you learned something new, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram where I teach English every day through music and movies. Thank you for your time and have a lovely day and see you next Wednesday with a shirts and next Sunday with a long lesson as usual. Thank you very much. See you in a week. Ciao for now.